Hello, and welcome to this summer school episode. This episode features our newly released Institutional Sector Accounts online course, or ISAX. Have you ever wondered how government policies impact different sectors of the economy, or why certain financial crises disproportionately affect specific sectors? Perhaps you've questioned how sector-specific risk can escalate into broader economic vulnerabilities, or even how policies implemented abroad can affect domestic sectors. If these questions resonate with you, this video and the ISAX course may be particularly beneficial. In this video, we introduce the overall system of national accounts framework and discuss the role of accumulation accounts in tracking the accumulation of assets across the various domestic sectors. We present an example of how ISAs enable users to analyze intersectoral linkages using the from whom to whom matrix. If you want to understand the complete system of national accounts and how it tracks production, income, and wealth across institutional sectors, this summer school video will provide valuable insights. To enroll in the complete course offered free of charge, visit imf.org forward slash learning. You can also find a direct link to the course in the description of this video. Non-financial assets are recorded in three of the four accumulation accounts, the capital account, the other changes in volume of assets account, and the revaluation account. Let's use a simple example to illustrate this. Suppose John decides to buy a house for 800. He has no debt and has savings of 500 in his account at Bank B. So he begins with a net worth of 500. He purchases a new home at the start of the year by making a down payment of 200 and finances the remaining portion by taking out a mortgage from Bank B. He also makes an extra payment of 200 towards the loan principal in the same period. Finally, real estate prices increased by 25% between the start and the end of the year. How do we reflect these activities in the balance sheet and accumulation accounts for the period? First, let's take some time to review the classification of these economic actors to their respective sectors. John's activities are recorded in the household sector and the activities of Bank B are recorded in the financial corporation sector. John's acquisition of the dwelling and non-financial asset is recorded in the capital account. His down payment, mortgage and mortgage payments are shown in the financial account. The increased value of his home due to the rise in prices is shown in the revaluation account. In this example, there are no other volume changes. Let's record these activities in the accounts. The net worth in the opening balance sheet is 500, reflecting John's 500 in deposits and zero in liabilities since he has not yet incurred a loan liability. During the period, the acquisition of the dwelling is recorded in the capital account, the corresponding mortgage financing of 600, the down payment of 200, and extra payment of 20 are recorded in the financial account. The increase in real estate prices by 25% led to holding gains of 200. This is recorded in the revaluation of assets account. Overall, the economic flows related to the purchase of the dwelling led to an increase in John's net worth of 700. His acquisition of a non-financial asset, the purchase of 800 plus the revaluation gain of 200, was offset by the required net financial transactions. That is, a decrease in his deposits of 220 and an increase in his mortgage liabilities of 580 to finance the home purchase. The mortgage balance of 580 reflects the extra payment of 20 made during the year. In this video, we take a portion of the from whom to whom balance sheet matrix for one instrument, debt securities. The table shows 
the assets and claims related to debt securities among all sectors and the rest of the world, and the interlinkages between these sectors. Note that at this point in time, the balance sheet matrix shows the stock of debt securities issued by each sector in the columns and the sectors holding these outstanding debt securities in the rows. Each position is interpreted at the intersection of the row and column. For example, the second cell of the second column, 20, indicates that non-financial corporations hold 20 in debt securities issued by other non-financial corporations. Households in NIPISH do not issue debt securities, and therefore the households in NIPISH column is grayed out. The institutional sector accounts of an economy do not capture transactions or positions of other economies with each other. Therefore, the cell that shows the stock of debt securities issued by non-residents and held by non-residents is also grayed out. Looking closer at the non-financial corporation sector, the from whom to whom table shows the total issuance of debt securities by non-financial corporations was 200 units. Of the 200 units, 160 units were held by the resident sectors and 40 held by non-residents. Of resident sectors, financial corporations held a majority of 90 units, households in NIPISH held 40 units, and other non-financial corporations held 20 units in corporate debt. Overall, the largest holders of debt securities were the financial corporation sector, 270 units, of which their biggest holdings were government debt securities. Similarly, of the total holdings of the rest of the world, 150 units, general government debt securities were the preferred investment vehicle, 80 units. The from whom to whom table shows the total debt securities issued by residents equals total holdings, 450 units, and 150 units of resident debt securities held by non-residents. Note also that non-residents issued 100 units of debt securities which were held by resident sectors. We could construct a similar matrix for debt securities with additional characteristics, such as the currency of issuance and or maturity.